Welcome back to the Morning Brief. Time now for your top story. Starting off, we've seen hunger pangs, birth anger and protests. This time, theft is the offspring. As the FCT Police Command says, it has arrested 15 suspects, including two security guards who actively participated in the looting of a warehouse belonging to the Federal Capital Territory Agriculture and Rural Development Secretariat on the outskirts of the city center. The looters stripped the warehouse as they vandalized the facility but the intervention of soldiers in the early hours of Sunday led to the arrest of some of the perpetrators. A statement by the police public relations officer, S.P. Joseph in Ade, said exhibits including 26 bags of maize, five motorcycles and some vandalized aluminum roofings were recovered from the suspects. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, had earlier denied reports alleging that the agency's warehouse was looted by some hoodlums in Abuja. Now, this next incident may be a product of more anger, as you'll soon find out. In Edo State, two policemen on escort duty have been beaten to death with two others injured following a mob action at Ikpeshi in Akoku Edo local government area of the state. The incident reportedly occurred after a Toyota Hilux vehicle belonging to the escort duty policemen in the convoy of a former member of the State House of Assembly, Emmanuel Agbaje, hit a motorcycle. The accident is said to have resulted in the death of the rider, a woman and her child. Youth from Ikweshi community are said to have thereafter tracked the policemen down and beaten them to death. Two of the other escort duty policemen were however rescued by operatives of the Edo State Vigilante Network in the area and are currently undergoing treatment at an undisclosed hospital in Edo State. The spokesperson of the Edo State Police Command, Chidi Nwabuzo, who confirmed the incident, disclosed that the four policemen were from Police Mobile Force 19, Port Harcourt in River State. He also explained that investigation into the incident was ongoing, after which the command would release more details to the public. Public. Now, two wrongs definitely don't make, make a right. Meanwhile, in Edo State, the governor, Godwin Obaseki, has faulted the Central Bank of Nigeria over its recent increment of the monetary policy rate, MPR, to 22.5%. Mr. Obaseki argued that the decision is not a solution to the current economic crisis in the country. Instead, he is advocating for an increase in local production to cater to goods and services. Governor Basaki gave this opinion in his speech as a guest speaker during the annual dinner of the Edo Zone of Bankers Committee in Benin City, the state capital. I understand the monetary rationale for increasing NPR, but fundamentally and fiscally, it is not going to lead to growth in our economy. We must focus on the fundamentals, which is increasing production, making sure our citizens produce the goods and services we consume and depend less on imports. Our economic policy and monetary policy cannot be determined by exchange rates alone. So this whole issue of increasing the cash reserves and the bid to, re to tighten liquidity is going to be detrimental to our economy. I understand the challenge the monetary authorities face, but unfortunately you cannot clap with one hand. The economy is about the fiscal and monetary policies. Both must work hand in hand. And when they don't, as they don't in Nigeria, we'll have a crisis. So we should focus on fiscal issues so that we can grow our economy out of the challenges we have. We should not panic too much because of foreign exchange. We must focus on how we can do things within our economy, how we can grow our economy to earn more foreign exchange, if foreign exchange is our problem. But I believe that creating jobs for young people this should be more of a priority for us as a people at this time. And there's more on economic development as appeals for patients with regards to the federal government plans to implement the Orosoya report is coming as it would greatly benefit the country. This is the view of the Director General of the Bureau of Public Service Reforms, Dr. Dasuki Arabi, 
who spoke in an exclusive interview with Channel's television. He urged Nigerians to exercise patience and caution in consuming information, emphasizing the need to wait for the committee's inauguration and the sharing of its work plan with the public. It is such a sensitive work and I would say very dangerous to us as, as a nation. We need to support the president and, and the government uh, in getting some of these decisions implemented that have been taken in the best interest of this uh, country. It is better for us to sit down, do it now, than somebody forcing us or somebody taking the space to do it. In our, in our place. And I ask Mr. Arabi if these reforms will get me out of my seat and there will be benefit for Nigeria, stands to regret nothing at all. And that is what the National Strategy on Public Service Reforms, Pillar 4, is talking about. Cultural reorientation, putting Nigeria and the service first before all of us. When we started the 2004 reforms, a lot of people didn't like the changes that were coming on board. A lot of people. And I recall when I went for a program with my uh, former director general, uh, Dr. Bode Adigori, and he was discussing about IP pairs, that one person or one office can sit down and pay the salaries of everybody that was on the payroll. Somebody said, are you sure of what you are saying? Can this happen? Is it possible for this to happen? And it has happened today. And we are even going beyond, uh, beyond, beyond, beyond that. And staying with the economy, human rights lawyer Femi Falano is asking the federal government to confirm or deny whether subsidy regime has been reintroduced after President Tinubu's announcement during his inauguration on May the 29th, 2023. The senior advocate of Nigeria is asking for the clarification following a statement made by the chief executive officer of Pinnacle Oil and Gas Limited, Mr. Robert Dickerman, at the Nigeria International Energy Summit that the Nigerian government still pays one trillion naira every month for petrol subsidy. According to Mr. Falano, since the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation has not deemed it fit to deny the delegation and there is no provision for fuel subsidy in the 2023 and 2024 appropriation acts, the federal government should without further delay confirm or deny the serious allegation and end the opacity surrounding the importation of fuel from foreign countries. Mr. Falano also alluded to former President Mohamed Buhari's administration spending of 11 trillion naira on the so-called under-recovery within a period of eight years, despite announcing it had removed subsidy on petrol. He said if the federal government is spending as much as one trillion naira on fuel subsidy per month, the policy should be reviewed in the interest of Nigerians. And President Bola Tinubu has assured the international business community that Nigeria is ready for business as his administration will take strict action against any entrenched interest that may undermine investor confidence in the economy. Speaking at the Nigeria Qatar Business and Investment Forum in Doha, President Tinubu told Qatari investors that Africa's largest economy and systems are being reformed and upgraded as Nigeria is ready for prof profitable and legitimate enterprise. Earlier, President Tinubu and his host, Emir of the State of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, witnessed the signing of seven agreements between both nations to further strengthen cooperation in the areas of education, enterprise development, investment promotion, youth empowerment, mining, tourism and sports. Forget whatever you had in the past that is negative. Whatever is the obstacle or problem that some of you might have encountered in the past should be something of the past and no obstacle to the future. Don't overbribe. And if it's taken from you, revert to us. Don't give. <laughs> Don't let it be a problem from investing. 
Nigeria is serious about the revolution and evolution in business promotion that we have. We are going to remove all obstacles. We have done so much within nine months. And I'm assuring you, it's easy. Free in, free out. Bring your investment. Whenever you are ready to go, your money is free to go out. I give you that assurance. And outside our shores, ahead of a planned ceasefire deal tomorrow, Israel has demanded that Hamas provides the names of hostages abducted on October the 7th still in its custody. Mediators and Hamas officials are in the Egyptian capital Cairo for talks on a new ceasefire as Israel is reported to be demanding reassurance on the hostages' fate before attending. Israeli media say Hamas is refusing to say which of its hostages are still alive, so Israel will not attend. Pressure for a deal intensified after Thursday's incident outside Gaza City in the north of the territory, where at least 12 people were killed as crowds rushed in an aid convoy. Hamas has accused Israel of shooting at civilians as they attempted to get food, but Israel denies this. And sports news now, 10 Man Rivers United defeated Dreams FC of Ghana 2-1 in their final Group C match at the Godzilla Lapabio Stadium in Uyo on Sunday to advance to the CAF Confederations Cup quarterfinals. The pride of Rivers came from behind in Uyo to beat Ghana's Dreams FC 2-1 to claim one of the two knockout tickets in Group C. The visitors stunned Rivers United by taking the lead in the first half and held on to the advantage into the break. The match reached its climax when Ayn Naya Kazier netted a dramatic goal in the 99th minute, sending fans into wild celebrations as the Port Harcourt based team clinched qualification alongside their Ghanaian counterparts who finished top of Group C. And congratulations to uh, Rivers United. So what are you saying about some of the big stories uh, that will form the conversation today?